along with my physical health getting better doing the Taiko, my fear of getting sick is melting away as well. It's great that this community is growing. I'm just so amazed at how bit by bit more and more people are getting good results. What's of interest to you? This is about you. Okay. Well, I'll tell you the whole story because it's quick and then you'll get an idea. I was to the point where I was in constant pain. I could barely walk. I couldn't stand for more than maybe a minute at a time. I would start to feel like my entire body, I would just have to sit down or I would collapse. I felt weak and my breath would go short and funny. I had frozen shoulder. I was on all kinds of different medications for hormones and sleep and hypothyroid and anxiety. So then I found fasting and I fasted from March of 2018 and I cleared up a lot of things. And then I just plateaued to the point where, okay, so I, I found you guys and I started taking Pateco in December of 2019. At that point, I was suffering from low energy. I was uh, constipated, which I had been my whole life, bloated, nose congestion. I was dependent on those nose strips, those nasal strips. Regular breakouts of canker sores in my mouth. Fearful, low confidence in my health. So fearful of getting sick anxious and regular colds plus my thyroid low thyroid i hadn't had it measured in a couple of years so i'm not sure exactly what my numbers were that's where i was when i started when do you think your sense of ill health started um sadly when i was a, a child i remember as young as seven eight years old i started getting chronic tonsillitis I was put in on antibiotics repeatedly. My mental health issues started as a young teenager. I developed an eating disorder at 13. That took me through my teens. I had a, um, a vaccine injury in my mid twenties. And then my health really went downhill. That's when I developed chronic joint pain, chronic hives, low energy, and it just went bad, from bad to worse. So my entire life, from what I remember, and I've tried, oh my gosh, everything, naturopath, chiropractor, osteopath, spent thousands and thousands on supplements, many different therapies, injections, infusions, going to all kinds of different retreats, so many different diets, psychic healings. I tried everything and I spent so much time and effort and money. And then of course, because this stuff didn't work, it just, I think that's when the fear started for me, the fear of getting sick because nothing I was doing was helping. Uh, and even getting a common cold would turn into a month for me of losing my voice and being so deeply congested, like it was painful. So yeah, I developed fear of, of getting colds. And now with COVID here, however real it may be, like I'm, I'm not afraid of it. So Along with my physical health getting better doing the Taiko, my fear of getting sick is melting away as well. Thank God. Would you like to just explain briefly how Buteka has benefited you? Yeah. About a month in to practicing, my CP went up. So I started around with a CP of 20. It went up to high 20s. And I, my first healing response was uh, foot pain, which lasted for about two months. And foot pain was one of my worst symptoms. It's the reason why I could barely walk. I believe that was a deeper level of healing of my feet that was happening. I also got a couple of colds. 
So I also believe that my immune system was clearing old infections. I haven't been sick since then. So that was almost a year ago. And then I had quite a few sore throats at the beginning and I haven't had a sore throat since. That's something I used to get a lot, the sore throats. Around March, my CP was in the high 30s and I started having nervous system experiences and I became a lot more moody and sensitive. Actually, I'm still going through that. But what I notice is like my whole life, I suffered from chronic depression and anxiety. And that is, even though I'm sensitive and I'm feeling like I'm getting healing responses in that way, gradually I'm becoming less and less fearful, more and more balanced. I used to have certain specific phobias, like a fear of being home alone overnight, a fear of driving, a fear of getting sick. And all of those are just, all of a sudden I just noticed one day, oh, I don't have any problem with getting sick. Or I just get in the car and drive and realize, oh, I'm no longer afraid of driving. Or a couple of weeks in, weekends ago, my husband wanted to go away for the weekend. I'm like, sure. It just wasn't no longer an issue. So that's amazing. It's given me a lot more freedom. I'm not constipated anymore. That's something I noticed early, practicing Boteco. My digestion is much better. And I find, oh, I have a magic trick in my pocket and it's the belly pumps that I learned um, from the intermediate potato class. Doing the belly pumps, whenever I might feel bloated or constipated or whatever, I just do a breath hold and do my belly pushes, actually. And it's like instant relief. Another thing I have in my bag of tricks is I used to get a lot of Charlie horses and so now I just hold my breath and shake that area until the Charlie horse goes away and there's no residual pain whatsoever. So what is a Charlie horse? A Charlie horse is when there's well for me it happens in the middle of the night when my calf like goes rock hard or maybe even into a spasm and it can be extremely painful and that would be something in the past that would, the pain could last for days. It seems to be a lot of effort for the muscle to relax. But with a single breath hold and shaking that area, the pain just dissipates and it's gone. So we call that cramp. <laughs> oh, okay, cramp. <laughs> I've never heard that term before, Charlie horse. Yeah. Wow. I'll, I'll call it a cramp. Oh, the Charlie horse is great. Okay. <laughs> I know what you mean. It's amazing. When that happens in the middle of the night, you just hold your nose. Hang on. It gets very painful to start with, but then yeah. somehow you go through the pain, come out the other side, and it dissipates. It's gone. It's gone. Mm. It's amazing. amazing. Yeah. And then my CP went up to the low 50s let's say around August, the first thing I noticed was I, I started having teeth problems in this area, upper left corner, which is where I've had a history of pain. And I was a little worried and called the office, but I got some good advice and I just did breath holds through it and the pain went away. And then I developed eye pain and really dry, filmy, irritated eyes. And that lasted me two months, entire months of September, October. And I believe that I was clearing potential future problems with my eyes because both my parents have cataracts and they both have very strong prescription glasses. So I think I was clearing a potential future eye issue. Yeah, very likely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And was it you that was mentioning something about joint pain or was that somebody else? Well, I definitely have had my share of joint pain that mm -hmm. comes and goes. It's not a big deal. It's something that I used to suffer very severely from plantar fasciitis, knee pain, wrist pain, frozen shoulder, back pain. Now I rarely get pain. The odd time I'll feel a little bit of pain in one of the joints that used to hurt. 
my knees or my maybe plantar fasciitis or my a left wrist and then it just goes yeah sometimes i find i get an ache in that joint in the thumb and it gets fiery mm -hmm. and then it's just disappears yeah mm. yeah it just disappears and it might even be intense but it goes quickly i mean i used to be like you in agony top to toe oh. my feet were very sensitive yeah. walking was painful yeah mm. that's no fun i used to get bruises in my toes from oh. walking and oh. i went to the doctor to discuss it and he said couldn't possibly be couldn't you must have done something else you must yeah. have hit something mm -hmm. yeah and then it's a cycle like then you don't you don't exercise and become stiff i don't know did that happen to you because i became very stiff mm. yeah where do you think you're at at the moment i've healed so much and i i believe i'm still I'm still healing. So I've been doing Bateco for a year and it's, it's amazing how far I've come. My CP has gone from 20 to low fifties. And just that alone gives me so much confidence. I see I'm still healing. So I've got some emotional healing still that I'm doing and some physical things that are still releasing. It's happening quicker. Like for example, I feel like I have a bit of a hoarse throat now, but it'll probably be gone by tomorrow. I find for me, fasting helps as well. And it's nice that that was confirmed by what I've learned with Viteco, like to eat less and to eat within a window between 11 and 7. So I find when I stick to that, I do really, really well when I'm doing the Bateco and the fasting and or the minimal eating between 11 and 7. I feel great. I still have a bit of nervous system stuff to heal. We've just been sort of discussing how it is being ill and having found something that actually works. I am so i just feel talking to you waves of extreme gratitude for finally finding something that works potato online like i i thought i had tried everything and i actually didn't really have that much hope that potato would totally change my life in a positive direction but i'm just so grateful that it has i feel so empowered having this tool that actually works. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. Would you like to give a summary of what the quality of life is for you now? You know, like what is your day like? My day is good. I go to bed whenever I want to, which was not the case two years ago. So I don't worry about it. I go to sleep or if I don't sleep, I don't worry about that. I get up in the morning, even if I'm, feeling tired. I know that after I do a set, I'll be fine. So I start my day positively. I'm not hungry or craving right away. So I have time in the morning to do my potato and then I contemplate. It's very fulfilling, my morning routine. I'm not concerned with eating. I don't eat anything or drink anything until 11 o'clock. So I have some freedom there. I'm fairly present during my work day. I still have some triggers around the concept of feeling busy and rushed at work, but I'm aware of those ideas much more so than I used to be. Interestingly, the quality of my day tends to go down a little late afternoon, and isn't that exactly when my pauses drop? So I'm pinpointing that time of day and if i'm preventative on any given day and i do more regular pauses i sail through that time of day i have a nice peaceful evening and the only other area where i'm working on the quality of my day is not eating after 7 p.m when i stick to not eating after 7 and then i do a really nice potato set two days later or two hours later sorry i have a perfect day so the quality of my day is excellent. <laughs> That's great.
And I mean, the thing is, is all of us who've managed to find this are blessed you know, because it's the actual method that does the job. Mm -hmm. It's actually keeping your pauses up that mm -hmm. does the job. It's a technical thing. Mm -hmm. It's a deficiency. We're working with a deficiency. It's great that this community is growing. That's what I, I'm just so amazed at how bit by bit, more and more people are getting good results. Wow. And improving their level of health. Yeah. And no longer in need of any help. And they're now turning their lives around to be able to help others. And that yeah. is the blessing, is to be able to be in that position. Yes, yes. The other day, because I'm working from home, my husband said, you know, I could hear you with your kids and you're so present with them and you're so delighted to see them. And in turn, they're absolutely delighted. Like he said, it just warmed his heart. And I thought, like, I am present and that's not something I used to be. Mm. And I'm fairly happy most of the time. And that's definitely not something I used to be. A big change for me was when I made that goal, I was telling Vladimir, I made this goal to do eight, eight sets uh, where I reached 120, eight pauses where I reached 120 a day. And then he said, no, drop that down to four and do an hour of cotton in your nose. Well, since I've been doing that consistently, my mood has been much stabler mm. and happier, mm. is getting those high pauses at least four times a day mm. and then working on your breathing pattern a hundred percent working on my breathing pattern because mm. if i don't i can't reach those high pauses but the thing is if you work on the accumulative effects you see it's the accumulation of co2 mm -hmm. that is the key because it builds up every time you breathe <laughs> it builds okay Okay. Yeah. It's a nice feeling too. Mm. That's the thing is people, it's very easy to get stuck into the pauses and think that's it. Yeah, the pauses are it, but then between sets is really important for the accumulation. Mm -hmm. The pauses help you to breathe less and then it's about how to get the accumulation. That's the key. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Takes real training. Well, that's the thing it does. And that's another thing that's helped me is taking regular courses with you guys and coming to the monthly pre-session, continuing to take courses and retake courses has made a huge difference. Well, and of course, me, I do the practitioner work and I get to retake the courses as well. That's Either okay. I'm delivering them or I'm listening to someone else deliver them. And that means that I get the benefit because it's a constant yeah. process of being reminded. Yeah, yeah. Because you're always there helping for the free monthlies. You're with the advanced mm. training. Mm. How fun. I get the most benefit of anybody. Yeah. <laughs> And that's the thing about this, is that more people are in the sort of zone of people who are practicing, mm -hmm. the more benefit they get for themselves. Yes, yes. And by the way, thank you so much for those free monthlies. Those are really fantastic. They're good for everybody. Mm -hmm. Constant repetition. Mm -hmm. Constant mm -hmm. reminding, constant being able to see that other people have got the same problems. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, realizing when they actually need to do something a bit more and maybe take some more training. It's a way of keeping in, for us to keep in touch with people, them to keep in touch with us. It's very easy to go off on the isolation thing. Yeah. That's what Bootega discovered. He discovered that people can't do this on their own. He tried. He thought he wrote a book actually and gave it to everybody and said, There it is. Mm -hmm. That's all you need to do. People didn't get the results. 
Oh. And after that, he realised that people need a supportive environment. They can't do it on your own. Most people can't do it on their own. Some can, but mm-hmm. it's quite rare. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's something to do with the objective and the subjective experience. Oh, okay. The subjective experience of the practice mm-hmm. is quite difficult to manage. It's very difficult to maintain objectivity. So you need other people to do it for you. Okay, I see. Yes, that makes sense to me. Mm-hmm. You know, because we can't see everything that we're going through. We're in it. Mm-hmm. Very mm-hmm. Someone mm-hmm. else from outside can see for you and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. help you out so that you can see it. Yes, yes. Right. If you're not under supervision, you tend to plateau. Yeah. Mm. That's very common. Yeah, yeah. And there's loads of different traps that we can fall into, all of mm-hmm. us. Mm-hmm. And, you know, me included. It's not, it's not, I'm not exclusive to being, falling into a trap. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's why it's good to be associated with other people who are practicing. Yes, yes, 100%. Thank you so much for those free monthlies. Those are really fantastic. They're good for everybody. Constant repetition, constant being able to see that other people have got the same problems. I feel so empowered having this tool that actually works. 